What's going on guys? My name is Arjun and welcome back to my channel. I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard people use terms like mutual funds, index funds, ETFs, actively managed, passively managed, and it can get pretty confusing. I know when I was first learning how to invest, it was very confusing to me. And yes, while all these things are very similar, there are some key differences between each of them. So today, I wanted to talk to you guys about the differences between mutual funds and ETFs and index funds and help you guys to identify which one might be the best for you to invest in in your situation. So that way you guys can find the best thing for you. So when mutual funds first came out, there were some main selling points. The first was the fact that you were able to get access to a pooled investment vehicle, meaning that you were getting the chance to own a hundred different stocks by pooling your money with other investors. So instead of you having to go out and buy individual stocks and build a big portfolio, you could just buy one mutual fund and that would give you ownership in a hundred different companies. So this gave you built-in diversification. Diversification is one of the main strategies advocated by investors for reducing your risk. So basically, if you had 100 stocks and on a given day one stock went down 10%, your whole portfolio is not going to be affected that much because you own 99 other stocks that may go up to counteract that one stock going down. So basically having a diversified portfolio would in theory help you to avoid having any single stock risk. Some mutual funds can provide great diversification and offer you different areas of the market, but there are certain mutual funds that only work in one specific sector or with a handful of stocks, and those provide significantly less diversification. Another thing that actively managed mutual funds gave was access to some of the quote unquote best professional investors. But because you're getting access to one of these big professional investors, you're gonna to have to pay a big fee to do that. In some cases, it can be anywhere from one to 5% of assets under management. And this fee is paid to the professional regardless of how well they perform. So they may have performed really well in the past, but then once you get invested, if they underperform, you're still gonna pay that fee. And those fees can add up quite a bit over time. One or 2% over many years adds up to hundreds of thousands of dollars from your nest egg. A couple of examples of actively managed mutual funds. First, the Fidelity Magellan Fund. This is one of the most famous mutual funds that was created. Another example is the JP Morgan Large Cap Growth Fund. So actively managed mutual funds were introduced first, but then investors realized they didn't wanna pay high management fees for an investor to underperform an index. That's when this guy here, Jack Bogle of the Vanguard Group, introduced the passively managed mutual fund or index fund. Basically, what he realized was that very few investors outperform the S&P 500 index over time. So the best thing to do is have a fund that attempts to mimic the S&P 500. Because there's no active management here, there's nobody making investment decisions, they're just basing it on whatever the S&P 500 has, the fees are significantly lower in this case. Over time, there have been many indices that have been created and each one will have its own index fund that tracks it. So there can be a growth index, a high dividend index, mid cap index, international stocks index, and many, many more. Typically the people who buy this will buy it once and leave it until they're ready to retire. After the passively managed index fund was introduced came the ETF or exchange traded fund. The main difference between an ETF and a passively managed index fund is the fact that an ETF is traded actively or traded like a stock. So basically you can buy and sell this constantly throughout the day and there's constantly a price. Whereas a mutual fund, it's quoted once per day and no matter what time you put in to buy or sell it, you'll get the price at the end of the day. So an ETF, can be active or passive, so it could track an index, and in fact, most of them do track indices, but they're also actively managed ETFs. For example, the ARK Innovation Fund is an ETF that is actively managed. Again, here with ETFs, there are so many varieties. One of the more interesting varieties of ETFs 
is the inverse ETF. So basically, if you wanted to bet against the market or bet short on the market, you could buy, you could buy an inverse S&P index fund. One very important thing that ETFs are lacking is an automatic investment or withdrawal. So let's say you wanted to invest in an index fund and you were trying to decide between an ETF and a mutual fund. If you wanted to invest constantly without you thinking about it and just take the money out of your bank account and invest that directly into the index, a mutual fund would be the way to go. Because that sort of investment, that automatic withdrawal from your account and investment into the index fund is not available for ETFs. Let's talk about some of the other things that you guys should take a look at when you're deciding which fund to invest in. So the first thing you guys have to make the decision about is what kind of fund are you looking for? Are you guys looking for a specific area of the market to invest in? Are you looking for a total market index? Are you looking to invest in bonds? Or are you looking to invest in some sort of a mix? Then when you're researching funds, one of the best ways to tell whether or not you're looking at an actively managed fund or a passively managed fund is when you take a look at the fund's objective. So if we take a look here at a Fidelity 500 index fund, the objective is to provide investment results that correspond to the total return performance of common stocks publicly traded in the market. Whereas if we take a look at the Fidelity Magellan Fund, which is a mutual fund that is actively managed, the objective is seeks capital appreciation. So once you decide whether you want to invest in an actively managed fund or a passively managed fund, an important thing to look at is the expense ratio. So typically you'll see the expense ratio is some percent. And this is the percent that is charged to you no matter what the return of the fund is. So as we see here for the index fund, the expense ratio is 0.015%. Whereas with the actively managed mutual fund, the expense ratio is 0.77%. If you wanna invest in a fund that tracks an index, it's probably in your best interest to just choose the fund that has the lowest expense ratio. If you're looking at actively managed funds, the most important thing to look at is the fund's performance over say the last one year, five years, 10 years, depending on how long the fund has been around. So if I take a look here on Fidelity, they show me a hypothetical growth of $10,000. And it's easy to see whether or not they have outperformed the S&P index. Another thing to keep in mind is the turnover ratio. This is the monthly average buying and selling that the fund does. So if we take a look at the Fidelity Magellan Fund again, their turnover ratio is 54%. That means 54% of the portfolio is bought and sold in a given month. The important thing for you as an investor is that when there's a higher turnover ratio, you will likely be paying more taxes because there'll be more short-term gains in a fund. I would always recommend before investing in any fund, whether that's an ETF or a mutual fund, to take a look at the fund's prospectus so that way you know what the fund's objectives are and what their goals are and make sure they align with yours. So now finally, let's take a look at which one is better for you, an ETF or a mutual fund. If you prefer lower minimum investments, so anywhere in the range of 50 to $100 at a time, you're gonna to wanna to take a look at ETFs. ETFs typically have no minimum investment. They just require you to buy one share of the ETF. Many of the mutual funds have higher minimum investments in the range of $1,000 to $3,000. If you want more hands-on control of when you buy and sell, then again, you're gonna to wanna to take a look at an ETF. Because this is traded continuously, you're gonna have the ability to buy or sell throughout the day. Whereas with a mutual fund, it's priced once per day and you get whatever the price is at the end of the day. If you want an automatic withdrawal or investment from your bank account directly into the fund, then mutual fund is the way to go because the mutual fund allows for this and an ETF does not. And finally, if you're looking for just a passive index fund investment, both a mutual fund and ETF is gonna have an option for you. It's important here to take a look at the different expense ratios that are associated with them because when you're trying to track an index, the lower the expense ratio, the better your investment return is gonna be. This is because you're tracking an index, so all the funds that are tracking this index should have roughly the same return, and the real variability will come from the expense ratio that's charged to you. 
So hopefully mutual funds and ETFs and index funds are a lot less confusing to you now. And hopefully you guys are gonna be able to use this information that I've shared with you to help you make the best investment decision for you. Thank you guys for watching this video and if you enjoyed it and wanna learn more about business and investing, comment, like, and subscribe to my channel and let's head on over to the next video.